I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Republic of the United States of America. And to that Republic, for which those beautiful red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under God, which God? The one we pledged allegiance to. One nation under God, Yahweh. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, listen to that woman. Listen to her. She's changed our Pledge of Allegiance. No, it's been changed before. If you've ever done a study on the Pledge of Allegiance, when it was first created, the word God wasn't even in it. As a matter of fact, the children were taught to say this Pledge of Allegiance with their hand raised out like a Hail Hitler sign. And we happened to have a righteous president come along and notice this. And he introduced the word God into our Pledge of Allegiance. So if this president can introduce God into a Pledge of Allegiance, surely this old lady can introduce to you the name of the God, the only God that we've ever had, who only has one name. We pledge allegiance. We pledge our dedication. We pledge our consecration to one God in our everyday lifestyle, who has blessed the land of the Republic of the United States of America that we live in. If so be, that nation observes and consecrates herself to him. Oh yeah, we've got scripture for that. Psalm 33 and 12, I'm going to read you from the complete Jewish Bible. How blessed is the nation whose God is, complete Jewish Bible says Adonai in all uppercase letters. Anytime you see Lord in all uppercase letters Adonai in all uppercase letters, or Hashem in all uppercase letters. This is the where the name of Yahweh, spelled yud Hey wau Hey or Y-H-W-H, in the Hebrew and the English, respectively, has been removed from the English versions. Again, complete Jewish Bible should correctly read Psalm 33 and 12. How blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people he chose as his heritage. Now, this is from the King James Version. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh. There's that uppercase L-O-R-D. It should not have been there. Blessed is is the nation whose God is Yahweh and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Let's talk about this nation a little bit. Let's get let's give a little history about our 13 colonies. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. If you haven't dug and studied it out for yourself, you probably don't know. Our 13 colonies were established by what probably the British called renegades because they wanted to get out from underneath the hierarchy of monarchy rule. They wanted freedom from dictatorship. They wanted freedom to worship their one God, Yahweh. Well, how do you know that? Well, let's go back to some more history. The second governor for the state of Massachusetts William Bradford knew that his God was named Yahweh. And on his tombstone, he is buried, by the way, in the oldest cemetery in the state of Massachusetts. Unless some devil goes and tears it up just because somebody's telling the truth about it. (laughs) But on his tombstone, he has Yahweh is good. yud heh wah Yahweh. Tov. 
That's what he's got on his tombstone. And just for the record, according to scripture, Hebrew scripture, well, we're not Hebrew. You're not? Don't you serve the same God? Isn't there only one God? Don't you keep the same commandments? Think about this. The one God, Yahweh. He was the one who allowed this nation to be established on truth, in truth. And it was against the law, according to scripture, to celebrate pagan days. And Christmas is a pagan day established by wicked nations. Now, I know that sounds terrible, but it's the truth. Because you can find on the books, on the old laws, look them up, that it was against the law in the 13 colonies, and especially in Massachusetts, to even have a pagan tree. And this comes from Jeremiah chapter 10. They call it a stock, which is a tree in the King James Version. And to deck it with silver and gold. In fact, the first verse says, learn not the way of the heathen. Do not, he's telling his people, his people, at that time it was the 12 tribes of Israel. He's teaching his people through the prophets, do not learn the ways of the heathen or the nations, the goyi or the goyim. Do not learn their ways. He even went so far as to tell them in another place, don't even ask them how they serve their gods. Don't even ask them. It was against the law to celebrate Christmas in the United States when it was first established in the 13 colonies. Yes, it was. And it was punishable. It was a punishable offense by either uh, fines and or you're just put in jail. This is truth. So while you ladies of the United States of America, uh, excuse me, the Republic of the United States of America are searching out truth about what's really going on behind the scenes of our nation, it's probably time that you look to find out who the name of our God really is. It never was Jehovah. It never was Yeshua. It never was a Yahshua. It never was a Jesus or a, a Ernie Zeus or a Jesus or anything else. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made himself known to Israel as Yahweh. Now, I'm not going to go round and round with anybody over dialectic pronunciation. However, however, I do have Hebrew scripture with Hebrew root words that do support the pronunciation of Yahweh. And I can't find any Hebrew scripture or Hebrew root words to support any other pronunciation. Now, in my little feeble brain here, I have wondered, this is me wondering now, if his name was changed to a Yahweh to deceive the nations and get them off the pronunciation. Then there's another argument that the way is masculine and the wa is feminine. And he's a masculine God. Yes, he is. But he also has the attributes of El Shaddai. And if you break down El Shaddai, it goes back to a root word that talks about the breasted one. And we also know Yahweh created Adam, or some say Adam, from the dust of the earth. But he took out from Adam his rib, and Yahweh created woman because she came from his side, not out from underneath his feet. She came out from his side, from his womb. So she was called woman. See, this is easy stuff. But it's time that women studied instead of just read. And you don't study from the Greek perspective. And you don't study from the Latin perspective. You study from the Hebraic perspective. That's Yahweh's perspective. Well, we don't speak Hebrew. Oh, yes, you do. Every time you say hallelujah, 
You're speaking perfect Hebrew. Perfect Hebrew. Perfect Hebrew. Hallelu means praise in Hebrew. And Yah is the short form, short poetic form of Yahweh found in Psalm 68 and 4. But your King James Version botched it up and they put a J on it, put a Jah instead of a Yah. And the letter J is less than 300 years old. Now, these things that I share with you is probably making your head spin, making you mad. Well, that's good. I hope it makes you so mad that you dig into this and try to prove me wrong. Well, you're not proving me wrong. You'd be proving his word wrong. Because humans have removed his name from his word. Why did they do that? Who did this? Remember, history. History proves that Rome ruled the world at one time. The Greeks ruled the world at one time. And they destroyed, they hate Israel. Hate the 12 tribes that formed Israel. They hate the word. They hate, except for what they want to present in their perspective of the word. They hate the name of Yahweh. Yeah, they do. Mashiach said, Mashiach Yahweh said, Messiah Yahweh said, You shall be hated by all nations for my namesake. Now, please understand, ladies, I do not question your experience or anyone else's experience ever. I would be a complete idiot to do that. Because Yahweh deals with anybody, anywhere, anytime, even an atheist. And no atheist is going to tell me that they don't believe in a God. Because I know the one Yahweh that gave an atheist breath. Now, if that atheist kept on going and didn't want to retain Yahweh in his knowledge, Yahweh turned him over to a reprobate. And a reprobate cannot know good from evil. And that's a sad, sad, sad thing. Now, you wonder why they're making all these laws protecting people that think that they're one gender and they make themselves a gender other than what Yahweh has made them? You ever wonder why they're making these laws? I got the answer for you. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of Elohim. By the word of God. By the word of Yahweh. So that when one who is stooped in any kind of transgression. When they hear the word. They've got this inner being, this inner measure of faith that has been given to every human from the beginning of time. And Yahweh Almighty deals deep within that human being, no matter how stooped they are in transgression. Yahweh does not want them to be lost in eternal damnation forever and ever. So the laws of the land in evil states, countries, are made so that you cannot teach the laws of Yahweh that bring conviction to the transgressor. Because if the transgressor repents, the humans who are making the big bucks from the from the physical evil, torture, mutilation, um, abduction, uh, trafficking of other human beings are going to run out of money. They're going to lose their dollar. They're going to lose their business. Woe be it unto you. 
Woe be it unto us if we don't warn. Yahweh told the prophet, and I'm not a prophet. I'm not a prophet as a man. A prophetess is a woman. I'm not that. I'm just an aged woman teaching the younger women as I am instructed to do by the scripture. And Yahweh gave the, gave the prophet a, 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 a warning. He told them to warn the people of their transgression. And I'm going to paraphrase the story. He said, warn them of their transgressions. Because if you don't warn them, their blood is going to be on your head. But if you do warn them and they don't listen and they don't turn from their wicked ways, then their blood is going to be on their own head. Now, it's not up to an individual to beat somebody over the head every time you see them. Uh, That's wrong. That's just That's just wrong. In fact, we have word for that. The word says, uh, the writing, I'll say the writing says, after the second admonition, reject. In other words, you speak to a person and, and admonish them or warn them of whatever. And then you admonish them a second time. And after, after that, of course, the King James Version uses the word reject. That word reject means just turn away from them. Just leave them alone. Let them go their route. That's why we have had freedom in the United States of America. If you choose to live that way, that's your business. If you choose to live in transgression, that's your business. But if I choose to live scripturally, that's my business. And you don't have any right to tell me what I can do and what I can't do. And it's against Yahweh's laws for you to make a law that I can't speak the truth and tell the truth and share the truth with somebody who's miserable, stooped in transgression. Because it's his love from his word. It's his love letter to anybody that you can be free from evil. I don't care who you think you've sold your soul to. That's a lie from the pits of hell because Yahweh gives space to repent and turn away from any transgression. And he promises to fill you with your Holy, with his Holy Spirit to keep you and protect you. So the enemy knew what he was doing when he made laws within a land who any land, any nation, That says, if you say anything against anybody who is in whatever kind of transgression, you're going to be locked up. Well, may Yahweh help us all. Because there were a lot of disciples that went through a lot of things for telling the truth. And this is where we are. It's, this is where we are. There are ones out there that are hungry. Who does Yahweh feed? Who? What does the word say? He feeds those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. But if you're full of whatever you're eating, naturally, somebody places your favorite meal before you, you go, Ugh, I don't want that. Same way spiritually. If you're full of what you already have, you're not going to be hungry for truth. Do you know how Yahweh allowed Israel to be home, to become hungry and even repent? He allowed adversity to come her way. And don't you think that this sweet, new, restored republic of the United States of America is going to be any different. What if Yahweh chooses to allow this nation to be humbled by another nation? Now, know this. If we cry out to Yahweh alone, not Jehovah, not Yeshua, not Yahshua, not Jesus, not Jesus, not Jesus, but Yahweh, One God, one name into all nations. Name is in the singular tense from cover to cover. If we cry out to the one God, Yahweh, 
What would he do, and how would he not spare any nation? Why do I say that? Because we got word for that. Again, Psalm 33 and 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. That's any nation. Any nation who claims their God as Yahweh. This is who Yahweh is going to bless. Ladies, this is what you as a keeper at home need to be teaching your children. But how can you teach your children if you don't know it yourself? How? Are you hungry to want to know? Do you even care? Does Yahweh have to let it get so bad in a nation before people make a turnaround? of teshuva, of repentance? Does it have to be that way? Does it? It's sad, but a lot of times he did. But he allowed, look at what happened to Job. Job was a righteous man, untouchable in his lifestyle. But what did the enemy do? He came before Yahweh, came before Yahweh twice. And Yahweh said, have you considered my servant Job? So Yahweh let the hedge down, didn't he? And Job, oh my goodness, he lost his flocks and his herds. He lost his, he lost uh, a lot of his children. He didn't lose all of them. He lost several of his children. He lost them in one day. One day. What did he do? He didn't scream out against Yahweh. He didn't speak a word against Yahweh. His wife did. Curse him and die. No. He said, you speak as a foolish woman. So I share with you, American woman. Don't speak as a foolish woman. Whatever you experience, whatever you do in this life, you honor the one God, Yahweh, and you teach your children to do the same thing. Oh, but the enemy didn't stop there with Job. He said skin for skin. And what happened then? Horrible, horrible, open boils, stench of sores covered his body. Now, if you've ever had a just one, maybe even a, a carbuncle, if you've known of anybody that's ever had a carbuncle, they, they, they raise miserably up and they, and they burst open their stench and their infection. And this covered his entire body. And he was taking potash and scrubbing it inside these open wounds. He was miserable. He probably ran fever. He was in pain and he ached, but he did not curse the one who gave him breath. He did not curse Yahweh. Ladies, our humbling time for this nation may be, we might be on the verge of it for a season. For a season, we may, we may not be, I'm not sure. But from what I can see, I'm, well, I'm just not sure. I really don't know. I know y'all can stop anything if we call out to him. If we're in pain and agony. But will we do the same? As when we got the other slaps on the hand, when we experienced 911 and all those deaths, and all the deaths through hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes, and after it's all over, we just go back to our la la land of living. Anything we want to do, how we choose to live, yeah, Yahweh gives you free will. You have the right to choose. Everyone, every human living being, has a right to choose. But I would like to choose for myself His ways for my ways. His ways for my ways. And it's a narrow path. I don't want my own carnal, fleshly ways. I want His ways for my ways. What happened to Nineveh? Remember Nineveh? It was prophesied to her that she was going to be destroyed. The whole place was going to be destroyed. What did they do? They clothed themselves in itchy, scratchy 
burlap. And they did not eat or drink for three days and three nights. And who did they call on? Who did they call on? Yahweh. Yes, they did. Look it up. You'll find in the KJV, the uppercase L-O-R-D, written in all uppercase letters. That should have been Yahweh. If you're reading from some Hebraic version with English, they'll have Adonai. It should have been Yahweh. If you're reading in another version, uh, you'll find Hashem. Should have been Yahweh. Now, I understand why people um, use Hashem, and I have respect for that. Nevertheless, how are people of the world going to know who to call out to if they don't know his name? Now, we have scripture, Hebrew scripture, that uses the word words like declare, speak, say, mention, on, and uh, praise. These are all articulation words for his name the utilization and the vocalization of his one name. Is it any wonder why the enemy knew what he was doing when he had this nation uh, and the world taken over by uh, nations who did not uh, respect the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose only name was Yahweh? They endorsed and enforced Worship of their deities. Their deities. And if you and they even made Israel uh, do away with their laws. Yahweh has certain laws for our good. He separates the clean from the unclean. He gives us a healthy menu of clean meats to eat. Nowadays you better watch what you eat in everything, including all these junk foods that you're feeding your children, mama. You better check them out. You better read the ingredients. I just read an article just the other day that some of the ingredients of certain chips and things have nanoparticles in them. Know what nanoparticles are? DNA from humans. You better watch it. We better watch everything. I've even been reading about certain restaurants. There's about two of them in certain states that I'm not going to mention that actually serve human flesh in their food. This is wickedness. This is demonic. This is evil. And that's what child trafficking is all about. We've only seen it in a small measure, but it's been a multi-billion dollar business for 50 years, easy. Thousands of years, It goes back to biblical times, scriptural times, when they offered up their children, their own children, as a blood sacrifice to their pagan deity. My, my, my. Ladies of the Republic of the United States of America, I I encourage you to search these things out. I don't question your experience. I would be a fool to do that. I can't question anyone's experience. I used to believe that Jesus was my Savior until I found out that it was never in any of the prophets, any of the writings. It was never in the Word at all. Why would our Yahweh Give a child a Latin Greek name when he was born the lion and the lamb of the tribe of Yehuda. Some say Judah. That's supposed to be a Y too. Yehuda. Not Yahuda. Yehuda. A lot to look at. I know I've tossed a lot your way. I want to provoke you to study, not read. I want you to be provoked to study. Until next time, may Yahweh richly encourage you women to pledge allegiance, your dedication to Yahweh, that we can turn those beautiful red, white, and blue stars and stripes that stand for freedom around 
to the righteous, holy freedom that she once stood for during the time of the 13 colonies. And yes, those that moved to the 13 colonies knew the name of their God. William Bradford, the second governor for the state of Massachusetts, has on his tombstone, Yahweh is good. Until next time, Shalom.